Hi, engineers. In this video, we are going to talk about bile synthesis. Super important, super important uh, pathway that is occurring in the liver. If you guys haven't already, it is super crucial that you guys go, uh, go watch our video on liver physiology, on the metabolism, protein synthesis, and the storage okay functions of it then after that it's also super important that you guys see our other liver physiology video that talks about xenobiotic metabolism okay in this video we are going to talk about biosynthesis super crucial super important so let's go ahead and get started all right biosynthesis in order for us to understand all this stuff we're going to talk about we should really really understand what the heck is bile made up of that's important before we can even go any further we really need to understand what is bile. So what is bile? Okay, so bile is made up of a bunch of different things. Okay, we're not going to go through every single one of them. I want us to get the main components of it because we're going to have another lecture where we're going to talk about the biliary system along with jaundice. So it's really, really important that we understand some of the main components of bile. So one of the big ones, please don't forget this one. This is really the most important one. It is called bile acids. Okay, so the first one that we're gonna have to talk about is going to be bile acids. So let's write that one down. Bile acids are super important. We'll talk about these guys uh, like cholic acid and chinodeoxycholic acid and, and those guys, okay? After that, we really should understand that there's another one that's really, really important, and that is going to be bilirubin. Bilirubin. This guy is super important specifically for the clinical aspect and its relationship with jaundice. Another one that we're going to talk a lot about here is going to be phospholipids. Okay, we'll talk about one of the main ones that's actually associated with the bile, which is uh, phosphatidylcholine. Okay, really, really important phospholipid, but there's also, uh, also other ones like phosphatidic acid and phosphatidylserine, but they're really important as well. Another component is going to be cholesterol. Cholesterol is also really important because that's some of the ways that we can get rid of some of the excess cholesterol that might be stored within the liver. And there is also going to be, these are the big ones. These are some of the main components that I want you guys to remember. Your bile acids, your bilirubin, your phospholipids, your cholesterol. Another really big one, that's why it goes hand in hand here, is your xenobiotics. Again, how would you define a xenobiotic? It's any chemical or substance that is present in the, uh, that is not usually present within the human body, or it's not produced in the human body, or it's in excessively high concentrations more than usual. Okay, these are some of the main ones. Other components of the bile are going to be things like obviously water. Water is a really important one. Okay, it's actually undergoing passive movement into the bile. We'll talk about more of that passive and active processes and transport in the biliary system video. Another component is going to be a lots and lots of electrolytes, tons of electrolytes. Sodium, okay, is a really big one. Calcium is a really big one. Another really important one, which is important for the alkaline environment of the bile, is going to be bicarbonate. Another component is going to be, uh, you might even have some amino acids and some urea, but another really important one that we'll talk about briefly is also called glutathione. Okay, called glutathione, and he's an antioxidant. All right, so these are some of the main things. Now, what we're going to talk about mainly in this video here is we're going to primarily talk about bile acids and bilirubin, okay? And uh, when we talk about the biliary system and jaundice, we'll talk more about phospholipids, cholesterol, xenobiotics, water, electrolytes, glutathione, and other things that are moving into the biliary system. But for right now, these are the two main things that I really want to zone in on and talk about with respect to bile. Okay, bile acids is going to be the main discussion here though. Okay, bile acids, what are the two types? Okay, there's cholic acid and chinodeoxycholic acid. For us to understand that, we have to understand what these two suckers are derived from, and they are derived from cholesterol. Now, the question is you should ask yourself, going back to the metabolism video, when we talked about liver physiology with respect to metabolism, 
is cholesterol. Where did it come from? It can come from chylomicrons. Remember, they were delivering some of that actual uh, cholesterol from the ingestion of fat. So chylomicrons, they were important because they were bringing some of that cholesterol via the exogenous pathway. What else did we say we can get some of this cholesterol from? We can get it from high levels of acetyl-CoA. So we can synthesize it, and we can get it whenever we're actually uh, recycling it through the lipoprotein pathway, right? But we're not gonna get into that in much detail. But I do want you to understand that the liver is making bile acids which are gonna be coming from cholesterol. Now, cholesterol, we're not gonna go into the super, super crazy structure of it. Um, I'm just gonna give you the basic things that are happening here. Well, let's actually draw out the structure of cholesterol really quickly here. And, all right, this guy here, cholesterol is actually super important. It's got a, these four different ring structures, right? If you remember from our cholesterol synthesis video, it was the A ring, B ring, C ring, D ring, and it has this little like antenna thing popping out there. Also, there is a double bond right here, and there's an OH coming here off of the third carbon. This is your basic cholesterol molecule. Now, what we do is, we send this cholesterol to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Look at this guy. Here's going to be one tube here, and then here's going to be the other tube. Look at this. Okay, here's our smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The cholesterol is going to travel down through this actual smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So now look at this. Whee! Right in there, okay? When he's in there, there's a bunch of different enzymes. Two really important ones that are a part of your cytochrome P450 system. Look at this guy here. Let's draw him. Here's his little nose. There's his little faux hawk again. Here's his little body. His legs are holding on here for dear life onto this. It's got one hand holding on here. And it's got one arm out there. This guy right here, he loves to wear a shirt that says seven. You wanna know why? Because this particular enzyme is called seven alpha hydroxylase, or we can say it's CYP7E1, okay? This is a cytochrome P450 enzyme. It's called a seven alpha hydroxylase. What do you think it does to the cholesterol then? It's gonna put a hydroxyl group on the seventh carbon of this cholesterol. So now watch this guy. We're gonna follow him down through this pathway here. So we'll follow this guy down here. It's gonna react there, and it's gonna come out as what? Let's redraw this molecule here. Here we're gonna have the three rings. And what we do is we also cleave off a chunk. There's so many different steps. This is only one of the big crucial steps that are involved in biosynthesis. This is one of the crucial steps. There's other steps, and what happens in those steps is you actually cleave off a part of that antenna portion. And actually what happens is, is you get this carboxylic acid that you're adding on. That's why it's called cholic acid, or chinodeoxycholic acid, because you're actually converting a part of that hydrocarbon into a carboxylic acid. And we have this OH group there on the third carbon. But what do we say that that 7-alpha hydroxylase does? It adds a OH group onto the seventh carbon. There it is, okay? This right here, this molecule, he is one of our primary bile acids. So we have cholesterol, we're gonna synthesize a primary bile acid. This primary bile acid is called cholic, I'm sorry, chino deoxycholic acid. Chino deoxycholic acid. Alrighty, so that's one super, super important one. This is one of our primary bile acids, okay? The other one is we're gonna take this cholesterol, we're gonna have it react with that 7-alpha hydroxylase. So now let's draw that guy in there afterwards. We'll take this cholesterol and we'll say another guy, one of the other ones, he, after reacting with that cytochrome 7, um, cytochrome uh, 71 or 7-alpha hydroxylase, he goes to another enzyme. So now let's draw this guy here. Here's our four ring structure like this. Okay, and let's assume that he's already broken that piece off right there. I made the, 
that uh, carboxylic acid. And he's got the OH right there. Let's actually put it in purple to be consistent. Here's the OH on the seventh carbon. That's already happened. Now, there's another enzyme. He's waiting on down here. Look at this dude. He is going to be another really important enzyme. And he's got one arm there. He's got the other arm over here. He's got his foot over here, and he's got his foot like this. This guy, he has a 12 on his chest. He's got a 12 on his chest. He likes to wear a shirt that has 12. Now, this one actually comes from a cytochrome family, particular 8B1. Uh, All right, so this guy right here, our cyp 8 b one I know it seems odd, but he is really our 12-alpha hydroxylase. Just like over here, uh, this one actually does make sense, right? CYP71, this was our 7-alpha hydroxylase. These are really important in the formation of the bile acids. Well, what happens is this guy right here, he sticks his nice little fat foot out here, and he, re he actually puts a hydroxyl group onto the seventh carbon of this cholesterol molecule. And now look what happens when he comes out of the smoothie R. He comes out, and now we are going to have still that four ring structure like this. Okay, now that antenna part, again, it was broken off. We should have a carboxylic acid right here. We should have a double bond right there, an OH right there. He should have an OH on this carbon, the third, the actual seventh carbon. Let's make that nice and big there. And now we should have another OH, but now it's going to be on the 12th carbon, okay? So now we're gonna have that OH right there. This guy is called cholic acid. So what is this one called? He is called cholic acid. These are the two primary bile acids that we are synthesizing, okay? Now, something that can happen is the liver can actually just go and excrete these bad boys out into the biliary system. Like pretend here, like right over here, let's say that here is our biliary canaliculi, okay? Here's our biliary canaliculi. We can take now, if we need to, if we want to, we can take some of these primary bile acids and we can go ahead and shunt these guys and put them into the biliary system through specific types of transporters that we'll talk about. One of the main ones that we actually utilize to pump these suckers out here is called BSEP, bile salt export pump. Okay, super important one. But guess what else? We don't always have to just do that. We also do something else that's really, really important. When we take these guys in the liver, we can do what's called conjugation. So what we did here is we actually did some hydroxylation reactions, all right? Then we can do some conjugation reactions. So you notice here, this is, type of, this is a type of xenobiotic metabolism if you think it right, right? So now what we can do here is we can take this guy here, the chinodeoxycholic acid, we can send it through two pathways. We can take the cholic acid and we can send this bad boy through two pathways. Let's say that now that carboxylic acid there, it's really good if I actually deprotonate that bad boy and then I add on a specific type of molecule that I can react with it or conjugate with it that can make it super, super polar. Because right now it's not very polar, it's maybe slightly polar, but let's make it really polar. So now, let's take these molecules here. I'm gonna draw my two cholesterol molecules here. I'm gonna have all these guys. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna go ahead and add on a special molecule here. And let's say that this guy that we're gonna add on here, we're gonna add it on here in blue. Okay, here's this blue molecule that we added. Let's say that that blue molecule that we added is called glycine. He is one of our amino acids. We can do that to both of these guys. So we can add it onto the chinodeoxycholic acid, or we could add it onto the cholic acid. So now look at this guy here. Boom, put the OH right there. Put our blue OH right here. And again, what did we add onto this bad boy? We added on a glycine, and the glycine is able to have this charge, which makes this molecule, this new molecule, superpolar. What do we call this guy? 
Since it's glycine, we call it glyco. <laughs> this is chino deoxy acid. It's a mouthful. We can do something else. We can add on a, let's do this one in uh, purple. Actually, yeah, purple. We can add on something else. We could add on what's called a taurine. Okay? It's another kind of amino acid basic structure, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and add that guy on there. So now let me draw my four rings here. Okay, and again, I'm going to have here my carbonyl group right there. And what did I add on to it? I added on to this bad boy here a taurine molecule. And again, what will I have right here? I'll have an OH coming off right there. I'll have a double bond right there. And I'll have a OH right there. This molecule where I conjugated it with the taurine, this is called toro chino deoxycholic acid. So toro chino deoxycholic acid. These are the two types of conjugated bile salts. Okay? Now, same thing. I can take here with the cholic acid and do the same process here. What I'm doing here is I'm just conjugating these bad boys to make my bile acids more polar. That's it. So now, hey, let's rip through these bad boys. So here I'm going to have my four ring structure here. And again, carbonyl group right there. Double bond, OH. Have an OH on two points now. One on the third carbon, and the other one is actually orange. And that should be on the 12th carbon. OK. Now, what do I need to do here? OK, I need to add on a glycine molecule. OK, and this is going to make it super, super charged molecule. What do you call this bad boy? We call this glycocholic acid. A lot easier one for, for this guy here. OK, so we just call this glycocholic acid. Same thing with the other one. All we're going to do is we're going to add a taurine onto it. So let's come over here. Let's make a little bit more space here for this bad boy. So here's this guy, come over here, react it with the taurine. What are we going to get? Let's have our four ring structure. You guys better know how to draw cholesterol, the basic structure of it by now, after this. <laughs> so now let's have this guy right here. Here's our double bond right there. And again, what am I going to have connected onto this? I'm going to have my taurine molecule, which is going to make this guy supercharged and a lot more polar. And again, what will I have here? OH coming off of the seventh carbon. I'll have my normal OH coming off of the third carbon. And I'll have an OH here coming off of the twelfth carbon. Okay, what do you call this molecule? Torocholic acid. So this is called torocholic acid. So again, just remember these guys right here, super, super important. These are our primary these were our primary bile acids, the chino deoxycholic acid and the cholic acid. Then what we did is we conjugated them with glycine and taurine to make them more polar. If you remember, what did I tell you though could happen? I told you that some of these guys, the chino deoxycholic acid and the cholic acid, we could take this, put it into our biliary system. Right? Now the biliary system, you know, will combine with the pancreatic system, right? You have your common bile duct combined with the main pancreatic duct. And then what happens? They form the ampulla of Vader, or the uh, hepatopancreatic ampulla, which is controlled, or uh, the opening is controlled by the hepatopancreatic sphincter, or the sphincter of Odi. But basically what happens is it pushes those bile acids out here. So let's just put out here, what do we have now? Cholic acid. And this monster over here called chino deoxy cholic acid. These guys can be metabolized by bacterial enzymes. So there is bacterial enzymes located within our intestines. So let's say here's some bacteria here. 
Look, here's our bacteria. Look at this dude. He is ready to help out. Look, he's got a couple hairs here. He's smiling. He's ready to roll. He produces particular enzymes that can rip off a hydroxyl group off of these two guys. Guess what part it rips it off at? It's a 7-alpha dehydroxylase. When it does that, this is important. When the bacteria break down these primary bile acids like cholic acid and chinodeoxycholic acid, it converts it into secondary bile acids. So now, you should actually know, let's actually do a small little diagram over here. Small little diagram. So here's your liver. Okay. Falciform ligament right there. Let's just say that here, we're just going to represent this tube just to, it's like, as in simple diagram here. This tube is representing your gastrointestinal tract. We're going to represent this right here as your biliary system. Okay, it's connecting to the actual gastrointestinal tract here. Again, it's just a functional diagram. And then there's going to be a circulation that returns some of the actual bile components back to the liver. This right here is a super important thing, okay? This actual um, portal circulation here. We call this, whenever we have our, remember, what were we actually making here? Let's put bile acids. They were put into our biliary system, brought here into the intestines, helped to emulsify some of the fat, then metabolized by bacteria and they can be taken back up and moved through this portal circulation back to the liver. What do you call this whole circulation? They call this the enterohepatic circulation. It's super important, okay? We'll talk more about it later, but I want you guys to understand that what happens is that these got actual bile salts, the bile acids, primary ones, they go to the biliary system, go to the intestines, get broken down by bacterial enzymes, and get converted into secondary bile acids. So now, when they come back, let's just represent here. Here's our portal circulation, and they're going to come back to the liver here. Okay, let's represent here our liver. Okay, what are these molecules called? after they're uh, metabolized by the actual bacteria. We should know what those are called. So now, if we take the cholic acid, and it's acted on by that bacterial enzyme called 7-alpha, I'm going to put DOH, dehydroxylase, or we take the other one, which was the chino deoxycholic acid, And we break that one down by the 7-alpha dehydroxylase, right? What do they turn into now? They are now going to be secondary bile acids. Let's do these ones in this blue here. They are now going to become cholic acid, will become deoxycholic acid, okay? The chino deoxycholic acid, when it's broken down by the 7-alpha dehydroxylase, remember this is coming from the bacteria, it converts it into what's called lytocholic acid. These two right here are your secondary bile acids, okay? So these were your primary, your chino deoxycholic acid and the cholic acid. They can be either conjugated or excreted into the bile, brought back through the enteropatic circulation after bacterial breakdown um, of the 7-alpha, um, the 7-hydroxyl group, converted into secondary bile acids. So these are my secondary bile acids. And guess what I can do with these guys? I can do the same thing. I could either conjugate them with taurine, or I could conjugate them with glycine. And if I conjugate the deoxycholic acid with glycine, I get glycodeoxycholic acid. If I do it with taurine, I'll get taurodeoxycholic acid. 
If I conjugate the lytocholic acid with glycine, I'll get glycolytocholic acid. And if I conjugate the lytocholic acid with the taurine, I get taurolytocholic acid. That is the significance here with the bile acids. These are, I'm telling you guys, you guys can't forget this. This is the most important. They account for about 70% of the super important components of the bile, the bile acids. Without these, emulsification of fat wouldn't be possible. So one more thing before we continue to go on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is the bilirubin. In biochemistry, you guys know that there's an important thing called regulation, all right? We have to allosterically regulate particular enzymes. This enzyme right here, the 7-alpha hydroxylase, or the cytochrome P, right, the cytochrome 7E1, this is our rate limiting step, okay? So we should remember that. Let's do this here in this orange here. This is our rate limiting steps. In other words, it controls, it's the slowest step and it's one of the most important steps. So what happens is whenever there is a lot of cholic acid or chinodeoxycholic acid, these bile acids here, let's do this in this black here, these guys can actually, look, come back here and allosterically regulate that enzyme. So if there's a lot of cholic acid and a lot of chinodeoxycholic acid, they can come back and inhibit this enzyme. Will cholesterol be able to convert, uh, be converted into cholic acid and chinodeoxycholic acid anymore? No. So that's important for the regulation step there. Okay, last thing, and that is gonna be the bilirubin. First off, we have to understand where in the world does the bilirubin come from? Bilirubin is the breakdown product of the heme within hemoglobin, okay? I want you guys to go back and think for a second about a particular organ that was super, super crucial in uh, the breakdown of old and defective red blood cells. Obviously, it could be anywhere with sinusoidal capillaries, but the big, big one was the spleen, okay? But it could be the liver, it could be the red bone marrow, but the major, major one here is going to be the spleen. Now, if you remember, the spleen has a bunch of different macrophages in it. And we talked about you know, the cords of Billrod or the sinusoidal capillary. So here's our spleen. And again, what do we say is really important? The really important uh, white blood cell here? It's going to be the macrophages. So let's draw here a macrophage. So here's going to be a macrophage. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume that this red blood cell right here, let's say here's our red blood cell, and he's reached the end of his prime. Okay, it's greater than 120 days. This dude's limping by now. You know, he's got a cane. It's time for him to go. Bye-bye. This macrophage is going to engulf that red blood cell. Okay, so now let's draw this big macrophage here. Let's say here's our macrophage. Okay, it engulfs or phagocytoses that actual red blood cell. Now, what is the main component of the red blood cell? The main component is the hemoglobin. Obviously, there's other proteins and cell membrane and stuff like that. But the main one we're talking about here is the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is going to be broken into two things. One is it's going to be broken into the heme component. All right, so the heme component. The other component is it's broken down into what's called globin. Now, globin is just a protein. And it will get broken down into amino acids. I'm going to put here AA, amino acids, which can be recycled. It can be utilized in various different ways. It might be sent to the bone marrow. The bone marrow might use it to make more hemoglobin, right? The heme, though, is consisting of two components. One is the iron, and the other one is the one that we're going to talk about here in a second. But what happens with the iron, just as a curiosity here? Two things. It could stay in this actual macrophage and bind to apoferritin. Remember we talked about that. We said it can bind to apoferritin and turn into ferritin. Ferritin can bind with a whole bunch of ferritins and make hemosiderin. Or we could push this iron out here and have it bind onto a particular transport protein that our liver so kindly makes to transport the iron around or to transfer it called transferrin. Okay, so that's one really important thing here is we can actually have it put on that guy and then take into different tissues around the body if needed. But we care about this guy, the heme. When he gets broken down, he actually gets broken down into what's called Billy Verdon. Okay? Then Billy Verdon is reduced into a molecule called Billy Rubin. Okay? If you really want to know the enzyme that controls this step, I'm going to put HO. It's called heme 
oxygenase. And then the enzyme that controls the conversion of bilirubin into bilirubin is called, I'm going to put BR, which is bilirubin reductase. So again, heme oxygenase converts the heme into biliverdin. Biliverdin reductase converts the biliverdin into bilirubin. Now, bilirubin is not very hydrophilic. It's lipid soluble. It's not very uh, water loving. So when we put it into the blood, we have to make sure that we bind it to a transport protein. And that transport protein that we bind it to is called albumin. Okay, it's called albumin. Then, that bilirubin, when it's bound to albumin, is then going to shuttle that bilirubin to the liver. Now, once it gets to the liver, the liver is going to do a couple things to it. So it'll take the actual bilirubin up, okay? It'll take it up into the cell. So let's just say that now we're inside of the liver cell, okay? That bilirubin is what's called unconjugated bilirubin. In other words, it doesn't have some type of polar molecule attached to it. So this is going to be what's called un conjugated. What's going to happen is, if you guys remember, we had a fat dude here. Look at this guy here. Let's draw him right here. And we had him like this. And he was called UDP glucuronosyl transferase, or we put him as UGT. He was important because what he did is, is he transferred a glucuronate group onto the bilirubin, okay? He transfers, so now he's going to react here, and he's going to take the bilirubin, which is not very uh, water soluble, so now I'm going to represent bilirubin as this dot here. Let's say that here's bilirubin. Not very, very water soluble at all, but now what we're going to do is, is we're going to combine this bad boy with a glucuronate molecule which is super super polar super super charged this right here that bilirubin which is bound to the glucuronate is conjugated this is conjugated and then what do we know about that then we know that the bilirubin that is now completely conjugated what are we going to do with it we're going to take this bad boy and excrete it into our biliary system. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy here, and let's just say here's our biliary canaliculi here. There's our biliary canaliculi, and we're going to excrete it out into the bile. Okay? We have to utilize particular transporters, which are super, super important. And again, we'll talk about this one because it's very, very relevant to uh, certain diseases. It's specifically called MR. P2, multi-resistance associated peptide type 2. And what it does is, is it just go, goes ahead and pops that conjugated bilirubin into the biliary system here. So now here's our going to be our glucuronate molecule here. And then it's combined with the bilirubin. Okay, here I'm going to put here my bilirubin. Now, if you guys know We'll go into it in more detail again in the biliary system, but what happens is, is the conjugated bilirubin will then get taken from the biliary system, get put into the intestines, and then what can happen with it? If you know, here we'll do a very brief little thing of that here. Let's say here's going to be the, here's our intestines. Okay, there's the intestines, we're going to have this connected to it now. So here's our biliary system. Let's say that it's connected with our intestines. It's going to go ahead and shoot that actual conjugated bilirubin out and into our gastrointestinal tract. Now, we know that there's bacterial enzymes, okay, different types of bacterial enzymes. Let's just say here's a bacteria here. He's ready to gobble up some bilirubin, okay. What this guy will do is he'll actually break down some of that bilirubin and convert it into another molecule. So let's say here it gets reacted with these bacterial proteases and then it gets converted into something else. And I'm going to put here for this guy, it's called urobilinogen. Okay, so then we're going to convert the actual conjugated bilirubin when we react it with the bacterial enzymes, we can convert it into urobilinogen. Now, some of that urobilinogen 
we can get it down to the actual ileum, like the distal part around the ileum, and we can have it get uh, absorbed, reabsorbed, and then taken back to the liver by, if you guys remember, this special circulation here called the enterohepatic circulation, which will take this bilirubin back up to a particular organ, very, very important one, called the liver, right? Now, some of that urobilinogen that we get, the liver might just reuse it. And again, use it to make more bilirubin, more conjugated bilirubin. Some of it, though, might go to your kidneys. And when it gets to your kidneys, your kidneys will actually have the ability to convert that urobilinogen. It'll convert it into something else. Okay, so now here some of this will go to your kidneys, it'll undergo specific metabolism, and then it'll come out as urobilin. And this is what causes your urine to have that yellowish pigment, that yellow hue within the urine. But some of the urobilinogen will continue to get broken down by bacterial enzymes. So let's say that here's some, some bacterial enzymes that urobilinogen just keeps going on and down its way through the intestines, and it reacts again with some more bacterial enzymes, it can get converted into something else, which makes our poo-poo brown, and that is called stercobilin. So then look here, here's gonna be a, there's a lump of turds right there, all right? And that's gonna what causes our poo-poo to be brown. Okay, the stercobilin, it gives it that brownish hue. All right, so that is important. So now, what have we talked about primarily here? We talked about the bile acids. We talked about the bilirubin. We talked about how we make the bile acids. We talked about the bilirubin and how it's actually put into the biliary system, how it's incorporated into the bile uh, synthesis pathway. Again, phospholipids, just remember that these are coming from fatty acids, okay? And the most simplistic way here all you're doing is you're taking a molecule. The main one that we talked about here is phosphatidylcholine. That's one of the main phospholipids in bile. All we're doing is we're taking choline, an essential vitamin-like nutrient, reacting it with diacylglycerols, okay? When we react it with the diacylglycerol, what do we get? We get phosphatidylcholine. Okay, and this is important because again, it's gonna play a very, very crucial role in making sure to soluble, uh, make the cholesterol really soluble, helping to emulsify some of the fat. And you know, bile acids are pretty hepatotoxic. Uh, in high concentrations, they can actually cause hepatotoxicity. These phosphatidylcholine molecules help to reduce the hepatotoxicity of the bile acids. One last thing that I forgot about, and we got to make sure that we mention this, it's super, super important within the bile, is, oh man, this guy prevents a lot of bacterial growth. These are IgA antibodies. These are also another component, I can't believe I forgot this one, I'm sorry, super, super important because they inhibit a lot of bacterial growth within our gastrointestinal tract. So these are some of the main components of bile. Again, we will talk more about how the actual bile is actually put, what, like with the components of bile, how it's transported into the biliary system, and its relationship with jaundice in another lecture, okay? All right, engineers, so in this video, we talked a decent amount about bile synthesis, and I really do hope it made sense. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. We're gonna dig into this topic even a little bit more um, when we talk about that in another lecture, which is gonna be on the biliary system, and we're gonna talk a lot about jaundice in that video, too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, I'm begging you, please hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. Also, if you guys get a chance, go check out our Facebook, our Instagram, maybe even our Patreon account. I, Nijners, as always, until next time.